lead our work at Edinburgh College of Art. Uh, I don't think I should know where the sun is, but I'll point north. A uh, very long way away, but the distance will, um, will be relevant later. And I'm Alex Hales, and I work for um, a sort of organisation called the Royal Commission on the Ancient and Historical Monuments of Scotland. A bit like English Heritage, but in Scotland I'm based in Edinburgh. And um, I'm not really sure why I'm here at all. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but you're my captive audience, so I'll talk to you about the maps. And I was working on the project looking at paper maps, old-fashioned paper maps. But we'll come to that later. So uh, I've been working with Chris about their video and some of these things earlier. And um, yeah, we're, we're a little bit technical, but we're quite interesting how technology is offering ways of uncovering the past. Uncovering the past, you might have had a trowel um, to maybe do some traditional archaeo uh, archaeology. But the type of archaeology that we've, the project has taken part in is much more reading, finding out, listening to stories. You've heard many of the stories earlier. And as I was videoing about this, it's rather like um, a metaphor of uh, ghosts. Actually, all, of, all we've been listening to are ghost stories. And really, people have become really the vessels of the, the conduit that are telling these stories. And where these stories go, we're trying to capture it. And we've got DVD, we've got a, a, an audio DVD, so if you put it into your computer, you can listen to some of these. But finding ways of getting these ghost stories out from their closets, or out from the milk bottles, out from the cows, the videos, back into the present is often very hard, very hard to keep them there. So the project's been a little bit experimental with how do you get these ghost stories back in? How do you, how do you uncover it? What do you have to do? What are the mediums? And who is the medium to recover them? So we've tried a few uncanny things. One of the uncanny things is to hack food. And that's what we're talking about now in some ways. And we had a couple of strategies um, one of the strategies features um, an application on a phone. So, for want of a better example, this is a big phone. It's a big Apple iPhone. It's actually an iPad. Now, most of you have been used to, in, in recent days, when you've found food and you've bought food, is that you've always really known there's a barcode on the bottom. And it's been really helpful. But the barcodes have really been the, the, um, the ownership of the supermarkets. And we haven't used them. They're not really things that you go scanning. Actually, Tesco have an application for some mobiles. If you want to order food, you can do it by scanning. So if you go around your friend's house, you can go scanning and ordering food in their kitchen. <laughs> so we're beginning to see that those codes there could be ours, as well as Tesco's or Waitrose or Aldi or whoever. But we thought we'd go a bit further and actually say, well, what do you get when you scan those? And most time I scan them, or the, 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 the lady I know at Asda, she just gets the price. And all that's happening is as she scans it, it goes off to a database on a little internet, and it comes back with a price. And we thought, we don't want to bring the price, we want the ghost to come back. So what we've been doing is adding hundreds of the stories and the archive data that the team have been gathering um, and think, what, what would happen in Tesco's if you scan a product and it doesn't come back with a price, it come back, comes back with a date. So that's what we've done. We've built a small application that allows people to scan things. So we're going to have a quick go at this live demo. <laughs> Bound to work. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll take, let me have a look here. What have we got? We've got Tesco Instant Mashed Potato. So if I go on to scan. So this is just a free app. Um, which you can download. It is, we didn't have time to develop it for every phone, but it only works, so it only works on the Apple iPhones. But as I put the, and the lighting is going to be fine. Let's see what it says. So it's obviously an interview, part of an interview. So already I asked her thinking, what? <laughs> how much? <laughs> how, would you, how would you sell the gardening life? Well, they'd only have to try gardening, really. Whether they'd get frustrated with it, I don't know. So what are you enjoying about? What do you enjoy so much about it? Well, it was something to look forward to. Watching stuff grow and selling it, things like that. It was a pleasure to do it, really. To see your crop grow from a little seed. I've been growing tomatoes now, and I put a little seed, and there. There they are growing, and they're that big now, in the greenhouse. So let's try another bit. Let's try it um so you don't know what you're going to get. Now what we've 
what we've done is, is make it um, specific to Liverpool. These are Liverpool stories. So if you go and scan this in Edinburgh, it won't work. It talks to a GPS satellite, and anything in the Liverpool region, that's when you'll get the Liverpool histories. So Londoners can't they listen to your stories down in London. They have to come here. And that was something we thought special about histories, that you have to come here and listen to Duncan about cow houses. You can't get everything on the internet everywhere. So we're very kind of keen that we keep some information local, because it's about local, it's about the experience. Let's have a go at scanning um, this lemon juice. The lighting will help you. It's a bit dark in the corner here. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> What's that live demo problem at night? Mm. Oh, there you go. Oh. Boom. Let's <laughs> do the scan again. Private self service check house. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Can you just want to press the bell and call the number? Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So some of the products are random, to be honest. Most of them, I mean, how many barcodes are there in? 10 miles of uh, Liverpool, I don't know, a squillion, is that a technical term? Yeah. But some of them we've had time to add personal stories to. So this one, this lemon juice, has a certain story. The more food we, food we take from America, the more of our manufacturers will America, uh, more of our manufacturers will be, will be American, Americans, or somebody else taking payment for it. Proctor, that came from the Proctor Practical Economy of Food, <coughs> Liverpool University. I think it's going to bring down a lemon juice. Let me find another thing. So we call this hacking food, and um, we think it's quite fun because it means that all of the work that the um, archivists have been finding out there it is. And this is quite a nice one. So this is specific to bananas. So if you've got this barcode in 10 miles of uh, Liverpool, it'll tell you this. And while your kids and my kids who take bananas for granted, I find this a story, this goes to quite soon. I mean, I remember the first time I seen a big hand of bananas, and they'd be in the cupboard, wrapped up because they'd be green, bright green. Just come off the boat, you know, they'd just come right off the boat. They'd be in a big towel, awake to ripen in the cupboard and all like that. And pineapple, do you remember being petrified when I saw first seeing me first pineapple? All those spikes. But we had the boats coming in from all over the world. I mean, it was the biggest port, and they were all coming in. So these lovely voices, that's not one just bag of bananas now. It, it means something. And all of, your food, all of the food in all of your kitchens, all of it, it's got a barcode, is now haunted. <laughs> so if you find a knock on the door, and someone says, can I find out some food stories? Don't be surprised. Let them in. They have a pad or something and they can sniff around and recover all these extraordinary stories. So that's food hacking. Um, it's a very simple segue to begin to get a bit more analogue. We thought it would also be useful to start opening up this conversation. So there's food hacking that can happen at a, on a barcode, but there's also food hacking here. So it's not quite as, I mean, they're not quite live. I haven't found a button to turn these on yet. But somewhere it will start saying, so we might well give this away to all the local food shops nearby. Get your hands on the recipe for Lord Walton Pie. So you might have bought some odd sandwiches or other, but by trying to hack the packaging, we're doing exactly the same. Trying to recover these ghosts, and hopefully as you visit the link through the portal, you'll find these ghost stories pouring out, haunting the food. Other hauntings. Other hauntings. Yes. Uh, hauntings and ghosts and bodies and bits of the past. Um, being an archaeologist, I've tried not to think about travels and bits of body, but I can't help it. And then I thought, but I'm coming to Liverpool, I don't know Liverpool very well, but I'm going to be working with great people who know Liverpool. So what's the hook? How can we work together with local groups and get together? How can the folk from Everton work with the folk from Sutley House together. Do they want to work together at all, if ever? What's the hope that we can get them together with? And I thought, I know, 
food. But food how? I'll tell you what. Food on a map. That's how. Because this is a map of ghosts. There are ghosts all over this map. So what we did was we thought, what is food? And how is food shown on a map? Are bananas shown on this map? Well, not this very one, but there are banana sheds in the, on the warehouses on the, on the seafront strip. And they're shown on here. So that's warehouses, that's storage. What about production? What about farms? Where is the food coming from? Where is the local food? Because bananas are local. But they're in the food system and they're shown on these maps. And then you get things like the, the wholesale <coughs> fruit and vegetable market on Casano Street there. Very important place, a huge place. There's food coming in there, local and exotic. It goes in there, gets churned around, and then the, it gets spat out and thrown around the city as well. What about the farms, the allotments, the gardens, the orchards? Where are they? Are they on the maps as well? And we had two great <coughs> afternoons and mornings. It wasn't long enough. We didn't have enough time. You were there, weren't you? Yeah. yeah, it was just too short. And we poured over these maps. And I was thinking, I don't know where any of these places were. And the stories were coming out. And the people were talking. And they were, the ghosts were coming alive. And the memories were coming up. And it was coming to the surface. And, and it, was, it was just a piece of paper. But it's a piece of paper that the Ordnance Survey, a government organisation, has put money into over a couple of hundred years now to create a snapshot of the past. Because this part of town doesn't look like this anymore, so we looked at earlier maps and we looked at later maps as well. Tino was there from the geography department at the university. He was the one who pulled out the drawers and pulled out the other maps that I hadn't managed to get hold of. It was really important that he was there, that you were there. I wasn't important. I just came along and said, here you go, have some maps. And what we did over time was we pulled out the places and we picked up the bits of body, if you like, the bits of food and the ghost stories. And we pulled them out and we recorded them. We stuck them on, on these recording sheets and then Chris, and Chris, who's filming at the moment, took those stories. They're not complete by any means. So we started the, the stories and the ghosts. We got them walking. We got them up out of their graves and we got them walking. But they've still got a long way to go. We haven't found all the food that's shown on all these maps. There's loads more to do. But then Chris took what we had and he put it through help with the people who put the information onto the Google map and he's turned the Google map into something extraordinary. It is absolutely incredible. So do, do when you get a chance, have a look. It's worth rifling through the paper, of course, because you'll know the paper. And you, I mean, how many map layers are there? Did we sit through? Oh, we had, well, we started in about, well, start or stop, I don't know. I had a map from 1786 and then one up to 1992, something like that. Not every year, they were interspliced, but it was nice to see the changes over time. So that's a couple of hundred years. And as you go, you'll see the big projection next door and Chris managing the, uh, the map. And there's an open platform as well. If you've got suggestions for the future, mail a team, you can keep adding. But at the moment, there's hundreds of points that have been added, possibly thousands, that are all on top, different dairies, um, pubs, warehouses, so on and so forth. We even forced Chris to carry a GPS um, device out and walk some of them. So if you're lucky, he might even show you where a ghost might have walked around some of these areas and begin to imagine the colossal amount of food centres which populate, instead of trendy flats, all the streets of Liverpool. So there's lots more to do. I don't know if we've run out of time. No. <laughs> <laughs> we can buy time. That's yep. what are good at. Yeah, that's right. But I mean, the great thing has been the interplay with local people. That has been the big difference that's made these stories come to life. It's made these, these 
just pieces of paper suddenly become something useful. And that's what it's been about, certainly for me, is this, this interplay of, of professionals and academics and locals all together. And the maps and the stories level all that, and it's not about positions, it's about learning together about the past, thinking about the present, and looking to future. And whether we can create future maps as well, I wonder. I'll, I'll stop there. That's us. That's fantastic.